Hello there everyone, today we're gonna do this. This is a variant of the uh, GP, very very classic fly, but I'm gonna do this uh, a bit faster and uh, and a bit more easy than uh, than the original one. Um, Eriks has just released these uh, very cool uh, Esmond Dury triple hooks, and then I'm gonna use one of these in a size 6 for, for this fly. Uh, I like the gold one, uh, they come in gold, silver and uh, black, but I like the gold one for this pattern uh, because it uh, it makes the fly stand out and uh, and look very very good. So so that's a good option for uh, for for this type of fly. As I said, I'm gonna, not going to call this a general practitioner practitioner because uh, well this is going to be uh, a variation of 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 the original pattern. So we could call it a variation. Um, I've landed two two sea trouts over the time on uh, on GP and it's it's really it's, it's one of those patterns that you 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 just you just gotta love it um, and uh, and here is here is uh, my take on 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 this old very very old and very very proven fly um, in in a in a in a fairly easier easier way to do it that still uh, have all the original thoughts and uh, and ideas behind the fly still, still, uh, s still attached, st still upholds the the idea and and the profile of the fly. So I'm um, gonna start up with some orange uh, bucktail. This is gonna be the tail, and I want the tail to be slightly longer than the hook shank. I guess this is a good fly in smaller sizes as well. Uh, you can. You can you can you can tie it in even even smaller than this, but uh, the size six here is 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 a nice size. So basically now I've tied down the the tail here, and to add a little bling, I'm gonna take some uh, because I'm really fond of this uh, ripple ice fiber. I'm gonna take some of this in shrimp pink uh, because that's it's gonna reflect a lot of light and and this really. Will, will will look great on uh, on this this fly so basically i i add this to to the tail here if i have a bit too long i'm just going to cut some of these down in length without cutting any of the bucktail of course and then i'm going to then i'm going to to keep the body here even or fairly even in 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 diameter i'm just going to tie a bit along the shank here i'm going to cut this off around there because i it's very important that there is not too big a difference between uh, where i'm going to uh, where the the body of the the, the dubbing we're going to use is is ending and uh, and then the rest of the fly when when we have to place the uh, the the, uh, the the golden pheasant uh, feathers so basically like this i'm going to use some slf salt water in uh, fluoro orange or whatever orange dubbing you have um, but this this looks uh, will will look very nice with the coctillon uh, cape we're going to use also and i'm just going to make a small small bump here to sh ensure that my shrimp eyes are are in place so just a very small bundle of dubbing like this and then i'm going to take a pair of black shrimp eyes this comes on a stock, very, very cool, very easy to use. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these within the V, and I'm then I'm gonna force them a bit down. And the reason why I do this is, ah, come on, that's annoying. Ah, that's even more annoying. It's a new bobbin, so I think I haven't adjusted it right. So the 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 tension of the thread was maybe a bit too much. Sorry about that, but you know, it happens to us all. <laughs> this this is, by the way, a Vibus thread. Normally, very strong thread. So I, I don't know what happened there. Maybe I I accidentally hit one of the the hook points. That is is a very 
<laughs> That's something that happens quite a lot with these uh, triple hooks. Okay, so we're ready to go. And I push these down here. Then I tie the eyes down. And then I can manipulate them into position, but I think that they're actually uh, in a quite good position now. So I'm going to cut the rest of this off. This will make the body too too big or too fat if if we uh, if we kept it all the way up along the shank here. And uh, don't mind the eyes; they're very they will bend whenever the the fish uh, grabs the fly. So so there's no problem with that. And then I'm going to take some gold rib. Um, you can use a medium or you can use uh, whatever. I have a fairly small one here, so I'm going to take this. And I'm going to tie this onto the underside of, uh, of the hook here. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to have my body hackle, and I'm going to use an orange, a badger orange um, cocktailion, uh, which, uh, watching cocktailion, which is a very, very nice hackle. It has some speckles, and it just, it just really, really looks awesome on the fly here, the, the, this, this, the speckled effect that this have. And, uh, and because this is uh, a shrimp imitation, or the idea of a shrimp, then, uh, then we have to have the, 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 the biggest part of the, the, the longest part of the hackle is, is going to be tied down here. So, um, normally I would tie everything in the tip, but this I tie in the, um, in the bottom, so I basically just pulled off this, the stuff that I didn't want. And then I'm going to tie this down here. So it's going to be right where the rib also is, like that. And I have the uh, the 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 shiny side, the upside of the hackle. This side here, the shiny side of the hackle, is pointing towards me. That means when I turn it, all the fibers will will naturally curve backwards. Okay, then we take some more dubbing, some more of the uh, fluorescent uh, orange uh, STF. Salt water, it's a left salt water, sorry. And basically, I'm just gonna, just gonna add it to the thread uh, like this because uh, we don't need that much stubbing, and especially here in in the lower part, uh, we have already a quite quite thick, um, quite quite thick body from tying down the eyes and the and the and the feather, so so we don't want too much dubbing here. Uh, in order to that, that would simply make the fly too too bulgy. And trying to get the the body to be fairly uniform in in uh, in thickness in in diameter. And applying a bit more dubbing. This really is a stunning, stunning looking fly. As you can see, I'm pulling the dubbing fairly, fairly long up into the, uh, up onto, towards the eye. And that's because I need to have a very similar length of, uh, uh, no, thickness of, uh, of the body and the, uh, and the head in order to be able to, and then one, two, three, four, five turns of the, of the rib as it should be. If you want to do this right, then when you start on this side, you should sh uh, end on this side. That way, you will have five turns no matter where you look and, on, on this fly. Then I'm going to turn, uh, turn the hackle. And I'm doing the hackle behind the rib. That's funny, the rib looked a lot more even than the, than the hackle actually looks. I don't know why that is. Hmm. It looks funny on the video. 
Hmm. I'm not completely satisfied with that. Maybe something like this. Maybe this is better. I want it to be... Yeah, that's better. Now it's even. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Well, actually, I think I only have four on this. Oh, well. Like that. And then we need to pick out some dubbing here in order to give this more uh, see through look and also have some fibers here. It's going to move in the current. And also, we do this so in, in a second, I'm going to brush down all the uh, all the fibers from the top of this in order to, to make it way way easier for me to actually um, place the uh, the golden pheasant feathers that's going to be uh, kind of like the carapace or or the, the, the that's going to that's going to lie like a so as you can see I'm brushing everything from the top here down underneath or at least out to the sides because I want I want the top of the fly to be as flat as possible because if it's as flat as possible then it's a lot easier for me to place the uh, to place the uh, the golden pheasant so now you can see it's well, I hope you can see it's completely flat on top here making it a lot easier for me to place the two uh, golden pheasant feathers that are going to be the top of this fly. So basically I picked two golden pheasant feathers and depending on the size of the hook of course you want something that ideally is is a bit into into the tail and basically you see I've prepared this by cutting uh, off the the bottom and then stripping off the rest of, of the fibers here and then I'm gonna put the feather through the eye and as you can see right here there is a not that big difference between the head uh, the the, uh, the diameter of the head and the rest of the body and this will make uh, my life a lot easier when I have to tie this down also I normally tie this down so I tie on top of a few of the fibers a few of the feather fibers and as you can see there is basically almost no um, no, no, nothing between the uh, no space between the uh, the body and uh, and the feather. There is no room in here between the body and the, and the feather, and that's that's what you want. So a few loose turns uh, towards the uh, the start of uh, of the head, and then as you move towards the eye, you can you can apply a bit more pressure. I'm gonna try to pull this out like so cutting off the first heckle stem there and then I'm gonna take another feather to make uh, to make this perfect and the the other the the feather number two the the number two feather here I'm gonna take is is I'm gonna have take some feather that is a bit longer I think just to give it a bit of a tapering effect I have to pick the right one you know Maybe that one. Yeah, that's perfect. Exactly the same way as I did before. The problem with these golden pheasant feathers is that the hackle stem of these are triangular. And uh, and the the way you want to tie this in is on the on the on one part of of the triangle, 
uh, which uh, which makes your job a hell of a lot more difficult but as you can see I managed pretty good here I'm pleased with this so basically all there is You see, it's a bit, it's a bit tilted now, and that's not ideal. So I have to replace this. That is better, way better. way better that second time around I'm gonna do my whip finish and of course add some varnish or some super glue or sapper gap or whatever and of course I need to pull out this uh, This last hackle stem and cut that off as well. Hmm. That is missing a bit with me. I think I can get it now. Yeah. <laughs> That's messing with me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that afterwards. I'm just gonna, gonna cut it off afterwards. But the, the important thing is, is to really make sure that you brush out the hackle here, and you make it, it stand back into, uh, from the body here. And as you can see, the, the color combination here, as, as you look at from, from underneath, is just, uh, it's just awesome. I'm just gonna pull it out of the vise so you can see. See how it is? Really, really awesome profile. And also from the top, it's it's really, really awesome as well. So so a nice GP uh, variation that is fairly simple, fairly fast to tie, uh, but but looks perfect and uh, and also will fish uh, uh, very very well. Will fish like the general practitioner was uh, was intended, like the GP was intended. Well. Thank you for watching. Hope uh, hope you found found the video uh, enjoyable and uh, and usable. Oh, as always, uh, remember to swing by my web shop for the full uh, material kit for for this fly. It's nordicanglers.com. You can also see the link here underneath or in if you just click one of the corners. Thank you for watching.